guys, hope everyone's doing good. Thanks for making your way back to the channel. I'm out here today working on modifying a fuel cell to work with alcohol. Um, and really there's not a lot of things you need to change, but there's a few things that you're gonna want to uh, change around. So I kind of broke it down into five things you're gonna wanna consider um, if you're building a fuel cell or even modifying it um, like I'm doing this time. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to consider is capacity. You wanna make sure you're gonna have enough capacity to hold enough fuel to do what you gotta do. Um, for me, I ended up going with a five gallon cell. I drive the car to the lanes. I'll run quarter mile sometimes and I'll drive it back. And the car probably makes um, 17, 1800 horsepower. And I haven't had a problem running out of fuel or any supply issues. A lot of the fuel cells you buy come with <laughs> Uh, Dash 8 stuff. Uh, this is the one that I bought that I'm going to be changing around. Uh, it came with two Dash 8 outlets. Uh, what I've done is I've cut one out and I've got a Dash 12 uh, welding bung that I'm going to uh, be putting on there. For me, I like to go with a Dash 12. Um, I also like to just put a good radius on it so it can flow really well just so you don't have any any restrictions or anything. Uh, this is a regular one, what it comes like. It's just kind of squared off. And uh, that's the one I put a radius on. Simple little thing. The third thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure your fuel cell has a large enough vent to be able to replace the fuel that's getting sucked out of the fuel cell with air. And most cells come with a single dash eight, uh, like a rollover vent combination and a single dash eight is probably not gonna cut it depending on what you're doing. Um, so you'll see guys run like two dash eight rollover vents. Um, but I found a really cool way of doing it uh, a few years ago. It's worked really well for me. So I'm gonna try and explain it. Um, it's a little weird to wrap your mind around, but basically this is my vent. It's on the bottom of the fuel cell. Um, I've just made this little bushing to, to put this filter on, but this is my vent tube. It's a three quarter inch inside diameter aluminum tube. And it goes all the way through the fuel cell to about a quarter inch to the top of this cap. And this cap actually runs down to about halfway down the fuel cell. I'll try and show you a uh, inside uh, picture of it. So basically the tube goes inside this other tube and that makes like basically kind of like a slosh baffle. This is the bottom, you can see the sump right there. That's the vent tube coming at the bottom. That is the other tube uh, right there that comes all the way up to here. If you can kind of make that out. It's kind of a weird concept to uh, grasp until you see it, but it actually works really well. Fourth thing you're gonna to wanna to look at is the size of the return fitting. Uh, most of the fuel cells come with the Dash 8 return and it's probably okay, but there's another little trick that I like to do to the return um, just to help it not uh, aerate the fuel at all. Basically, this is a Dash 10 that I built uh, for this fuel cell and I've basically welded a tube on it. So the tube comes down probably about three quarters of the way down. So when the fuel's getting returned, it's getting returned into the fuel. It's not getting returned up here and kind of spraying down and creating any air uh, bubbles in the fuel. Uh, this way it's getting returned in the fuel. It's not aerating the fuel and it's all the proper size so that it's not uh, being any kind of restriction. This is basically uh, the return tube that I've made for the new cell, but it's just a dash 10 uh, fitting that I've welded on a piece of this three quarter inch tube and I'll just figure out uh, the proper depth where I want it and I'm going to basically just be hacking that uh, return one out and I'm going to put the big return in. You can see the difference there. Um, so a lot more area with the dash 10 so it can move a lot more fuel. And the fifth thing you're going to want to do uh, with the fuel cell is you're gonna wanna get a really good cap 
uh, with like an O-ring seal on it. Um, usually the threaded ones are the best like this so that you can seal it up. Uh, it's got the O-ring on there. A lot of guys will fill the cell right to the top when they're not using it. They'll plug the uh, vent. That way there's no air in there to uh, allow any corrosion to take place. And lots of guys will just leave it like that and don't have any problems. So that's basically what I do. Uh, like I say, a good cap goes a long way. And it's a little nicer to use too. That's all you need. Um, like I say, I just thought it'd be a helpful video. When I originally put this together, um, really just read a lot of forums and uh, got a bunch of information from a bunch of different places and came up with this cell. Uh, like I say, I've been running it for three years now, never had a problem at all. And uh, just thought I'd share it. If you guys got any comments, anything to add, um, throw it in the comments there. Um, if you got any questions, I'll reply to them if you put them up. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, really help me out. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.